Cheers, friends. This is Owning Her Seat, a podcast that showcases women in entrepreneurship, restaurant, and culinary. Today, I have a reoccurring guest, Beverly Bill Jr., hey. att- attorney of law. Okay. <laughs> I don't know which <laughs> one it is. Hey. I'm glad so, to be here. I'm glad to have you back. So previous, we talked about trademarking and LLC, and I just want to talk about what you've been seeing in the legal world. Um, as far as contracts and LLCs, just so more people know how to protect themselves Absolutely. and their businesses. So uh, some awful things. Really? Awful things I've been seeing. Yeah. So <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's get it started. I know it's going to get so heavy so quick. No, okay. we're, we're getting to it. Um, for some odd reason, people think that once they start a business and they name the business and it's called Yellow Flower. And I think they are under the belief that if I just say it's an LLC, it's automatically an LLC. They don't file any paperwork. They don't go on. They, they just don't do anything. So it's like an invisible business is what yeah. you're saying. Oh, but I, but to them, it's very it's very much a business. Um, Beverly, I don't want to make sure I'm following <laughs> this right now. I know it's been a long day for myself, so I just want to make sure. So there are people that are just saying, yellow flower, it's a business because I said it's a business. And I'm going to put the LLC behind it, too. Even though it's not an LLC? No. Is is that against the law? or? Um, You know what? I'm a lawyer and I don't know, but I feel like it I is. mean, it's something, <laughs> because this, I mean, if but if I, like, hire your company, mm-hmm. and I'm assuming because you put LLC there. That you're an LLC. And then... You're not. No, it, it's definitely false advertising. Um, so the, how I'm finding out that people are not really getting their paperwork done is they come to me for their trademark. And I'm like, okay, great. And I'm going to assume that once you're ready to trademark, you obviously have a business and like a business on record. And um, we're getting through the process. I'm starting the application. I'm like, okay, um, where's your paperwork for your entity? And they're like, oh, well, I never filed it. I said, but you, I sent you an email with your business information. I said, so why did you put LLC? Well, I didn't know that I actually had to file something. So, yeah, it's, it's weird, um, but it's fine. It's all a, a learning journey with each other. Um, I love my clients dearly, so if she's watching this, I have to put you out there. I won't give them your name. But yeah, so um, I just want to make it very clear. You do have to file paperwork to become an LLC. And um, I think another thing is, you know, you have the LLC and then you have the Inc. So you have the people who want to be a corporation, which is great. Um, There are benefits to both. Um, LLC is just a little less headache. Um, and easier for you to keep up with, but a corporation does give you better like tax benefits depending on, um, how big your company is. Um, but that's another thing, like people just putting ink behind their name, yellow flower ink. Oh, okay. So you're a corporation. You, you no, I'm not. But like ink means something. LLC means something. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a thing. People are not actually filling out that paperwork and um, to be like completely transparent, I don't do a lot of entity formations because a lot of my clients are seasoned business individuals. So um, they usually have done that on their own. Very, it's rare that I'm actually doing a entity formation. Um, You guys, it's very easy, depending on what state you're in. Um, You know, if you're from Michigan, michigan michigan.gov, ohio.gov, something like that. And, And you can literally follow these little steps and get an LLC. I highly recommend also, if you're doing business and they say they have an LLC, you can go to your local secretary of state to make sure (laughs) that they actually have a business. I've known from experience with the contractor I just worked with. um, He had no business insurance. He had no LLC dissolved. (laughs) And then in the middle of the project, he said that his name had changed and he had a new company and he was not the owner. Yes. So, literally, make sure you are checking yes. these people's LLCs, because as we've heard right here from an attorney, okay, yes, that they are not LLCs, and you don't want to go spend your money, get a service, and then you can't even sue this person. Yes. So, in <clears throat> talking about lawsuits or discrepancies or, you know, any little issues that come up, 
your contract should have that person's address in it. I see so many contracts where people do not even have the other party's address. That's a no-no. So how would I serve you? How, how would I do anything with you? And you don't have, you know, it, I understand like some people don't want to get their personal address, but you need some type of address for this person, whether it's their P.O. box, um, you know, whether it's their business address. But that's another thing. When these people have an LLC or incorporation, they're going to have that principal place of business. And all of that should be in your contracts. Do not have, do not sign any contracts where, you know, both of your addresses are not present. That's another red flag. Yeah. Yeah, that's a red flag. That's that's <laughs> very heavy. Yes, it is. It... Okay, so we're going to get to the tough questions. Okay? Yes. We talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, not that I feel this way, but I feel like it's sometimes entrepreneurship versus corporate America. Yeah, like they're fighting like it's a war. And it's, and it's not. I This is my thing. I'm always a big believer that I, I loved my corporate job. If they would have kept me, I would have stayed. Okay. Period. I mean, <laughs> I did. I, I thought that I may have retired there, you know, until I was laid off. I loved my corporate job. I loved the stability. I loved learning things and then applying it to my side business. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of people don't leverage their corporate jobs. And I was always taught this is not, this is my journey. You work your nine to five until your five to nine makes more money than your daytime job. Like triple it. Okay. Because as you know, Beverly, we are entrepreneurs. The checks sometimes don't say, they don't pay when they say they're going to pay. That's simple as that. Mm -hmm. So if you jump out here and you don't have a savings account, if you don't have a husband, if you, <laughs> if you don't... <laughs> If you don't have, if you don't have a husband, it may think entrepreneurship is not going to be as smooth as it could be. Entrepreneurship does not have to be hard if you do things to ensure. It's going to be hard just because it's something new, but there are ways for you to set yourself up for success in this process. Absolutely. Um how I segued into becoming an entrepreneur. Um, I was working at different like legal jobs. And I'm going to be honest, I told you this the other day. I'm like, when I think about it, I didn't leave corporate America. Corporate America like never really gave me a job. So I had to be an entrepreneur. I had to be an entrepreneur. Um, and I, I feel the same way. I think if I would have gotten a like a law firm position that I really wanted or a position with a company um, as their in-house counsel, I don't know that I would have became an entrepreneur. That was what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I would have loved to work at an entertainment law firm. Um, so I didn't leave corporate America. Corporate America never gave me a chance. Um, they were trying to like keep me in the legal, uh, paralegal bubble, the contracts manager bubble. It was never like partner. partner. I, I want yeah, partner. It was, it was, I mean, I barely got like associate attorney. So, and I'm just You're like, very qualified. You know You're what? You're overqualified. <laughs> You're my attorney. I, I know everything that you are all doing and for whatever reason you don't want to give me this position. Cool. Um, and that's how I became an entrepreneur. <laughs> I did not leave a corporate job. I probably would still be there. Okay. <laughs> you know, at my nine to five. Oh, hey, girl. Um, I took some time off. Oh, you're doing your entrepreneur thing. That's so cute. You, I got my benefits. I got, you know, what I'm saying health, dental, anyway, life insurance. Yes. You guys I, like nothing is wrong with having a nine to five. Like, um, yeah, do it in the right way. Like when you're ready to leave. But I feel like people want to be entrepreneurs for all the wrong reasons like the the lady that you just had on here she sounded so freaking passionate about what she's doing I'm not even passionate about some of the business I got going on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying I mean, I'm being honest I feel like some part of my entrepreneurship is just about money and it really shouldn't be because you're your own boss you're your own everything and you're gonna have to constantly motivate yourself and if you don't love it you're not gonna do it you're you're not gonna it's gonna feel like it's dragging yes. like it's gonna feel like a chore you're gonna feel like literally, I think that with corporate America and entrepreneurship, there are some key things that you can learn from corporate America. And you really can 
set yourself up to be completely honest. A lot yes. of times, a lot of times the companies you start, they don't offer health benefits yet. Eating with Erica does not. We're on our way, but we do not offer health benefits right now. So literally <laughs> you have to really put yourself in a position because the worst thing in the world is not to have health benefits in the middle of a pandemic. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, when, when did I get kicked off my mom's insurance? I think at like 25. Awful. Like, and what was I doing at 25? I think I was still trying to get in that corporate thing. And I mean, yeah, they were giving me insurance, but like the position sucked or whatever. So what I did to transition myself to get ready to be an entrepreneur, I start taking contracting jobs. So I'm just a contractor for this company. I'm just a contractor for this law firm. Um, that way you, you don't make my hours. Like you don't, you don't do anything. You just, you're just paying me. So Having that constant money and being able to work on my own businesses and have that freedom of my hours, and that's how I kind of moved into yeah. being an entrepreneur. But um, I don't know if you think you make money right away, because you don't. You do not. I mean, it's a constant process, and it depends yes. on how you start off, whatever, but no matter what happens, you need money for revolving capital. So even if you have your product, you have to sit up here and pay for re-upping, you have to pay for, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I bet that's the best it way. It takes money to make money is what we're trying to say. Exactly. And it's just like, you want to make sure that if you're coming, if you're leaving your job, you want to have the budget for a photographer. If you can't take your own pictures, okay. you want to make sure do it right or do it twice. As my mother would say, like and her mother is very wise. She has like those type of little quotes. She needs a book. Mark my words. Um, but, you know, she's absolutely right. Um, you can't just jump into it and you have to have a budget. Like, I don't know if people think that's a thing. And then another thing, I don't know why people do not uh, value business plans. I feel like people just literally wake up and like, I'm going to start a business today. They make no plan. They do no research. They don't, you know, who's your competitor? Where are you getting things from? Um, business plans are way more important than you think they are. Um, I do not offer that service, but you should really get it done. <laughs> um, it is very important. And, um, yeah, like I, 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 I literally, I cringe when I tell, when I see like people saying, leave your nine to five, this is your sign. I'm telling you, sis, make that leap, take that jump. No, sis is making money just from telling you to be an entrepreneur. She's not even making money as an entrepreneur. She's making the money telling you to do it. That's true. And, and, That's and true. I don't know, telling you how to do it when she's really not even successful at it herself. But what do you tell me all the time? Those who can't teach. Boom. That's, and there it is. That's it. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about a very sensitive subject. Oh, Lord. If you love me, pay my taxes. Oh, that's not sensitive. <laughs> That's not sensitive. I would literally get that tattooed on my forehead. Okay. Um, we know that I've had some <laughs> terrible experiences not paying your taxes. I don't know who needs to hear this. Pay your taxes. They, they, they know how much you're making. Yes, they do. And they will garnish. They will take like, that's like uncle Sam is just somebody. I don't want any smoke with ever again. No, he's a thug. Like they take real, what's he a there. Real stepper. He takes what he, not a okay. real stepper. <laughs> he a real stepper. <laughs> Um, no, don't, don't play with them. They know, they know that you're making money. And then a lot, I won't say Erica's audience because she has very responsible audience, but some of you are posting what you make. So they, I, they're going to know how much you're making, um, because you're probably posting it and they're watching that. And this is a thing you can make. If you don't have the full sum, you can make monthly payments on your taxes if you're behind quarterly monthly whatever yeah. you whatever you deem necessary it's not like you just have to pay unless you're trying to buy a house and then you don't know how much you owe taxes and then they <laughs> tell you in order to buy your house you have to pay the taxes before you buy the house but if it's not that scenario you have a way to pay the taxes so it's not such a big bite you can break it up into smaller pieces and stay on a monthly plan but pay your taxes you need taxes for any, everything any big girl purchase especially yeah. as an entrepreneur you can't you don't get paycheck subs unless you start paying yourself yeah. and you have to you have to have it you, you're not gonna be able to buy a house i mean anything house, major car anything they're, they want to know your taxes that's the first thing they're gonna say um can you send over your tax returns that's so it. pay them and pay them on time that's it don't play with them like um they're the first people you should be paying 
the first. accountants, um, CPAs, your payroll people, pay your taxes people, personally and business. They are two different things. Yes. Literally. <laughs> do you have any questions for me, Beverly? Uh, do I have any questions for you? I do. Let's go ahead and get this table turning. I'm so glad that you asked. While I have you here, Erica. Yes. Um, hmm. What would Erica tell to her 20-year-old self about business? Because I, I don't think yeah. your audience <laughs> yeah. know anything else about business. Um, I would say, um, so when I was 20 years old, I was just, I've always had an entrepreneur bite. And I was like opening a store at 20. So That's right. yeah, yeah, I was. Um, so I would say don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, because right now there's so many more materials on where, how you can open a business successfully. Like yeah. we didn't have all that, like, you know, no. at 20 years old, entrepreneurship was like, it was like a thing of like, you had to be super stable. You know what yeah. I mean? It wasn't like, you, we thought it was like only for wealthy for people. sure. Yeah, we didn't like, know, like, well, I, can, yeah. I can get an LLC. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I would say literally have a plan. Don't rush. Don't, ooh, don't rush. Save more than you spend. Yes. Like, when you're 20, like, <laughs> when you're 20, like, your perception of money and, like, what getting money is and how much things cost are significantly different of how I view yeah. things in my 30s. So I would just say stay the course. And like when I first started business, it would be one of those things like, mm, I can't believe she didn't support me. Da, 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 da. And it's just like your job. It's great if you have friends that support you and it's mm -hmm. great if you have family. But your job as a business owner is to find your own consumer. Exactly. You can't you think it's going to be the per people closest to you, but it's most of the time it's not. And they don't have to support you. Like I signed up for, you know, a friendship. I just signed up to be a part of your MLM. You know what I mean? Like, I I signed up to be a friend. And if your friend doesn't want to support you in that aspect, like, you know, I'm all about reposting, sharing, all that fun stuff. Absolutely. But literally, it's not your job. It's your, you can't start a business and just say, this is who is going to support me, da, da, da. Find your own clients. And then when they finally understand what you're doing, yeah, they'll come back around. Well, I like that. I like that advice. Why, thank you. I think that's my only question. Well, good. Okay. Well, <laughs> here we are. Beverly, how can um, my audience find you? Um, they can find me on the gram. Um, I have several pages. You don't have to follow all of them, but if you follow one, that would be nice. <laughs> um, I'm at Beverly Bill Law. Um, I'm at The Contract Collection. Um, if you're feeling spicy, I'm at Guilty Intimates. <laughs> And um, if you just want a little key key and fashion advice, I'm at Life in Beverly Hills. Well, thank you for joining me today, Beverly. Thank you. And until next time. <laughs>